hello friends welcome to engineering tutorial so uh, in today's video we'll be resuming our discussion on fluid mechanics so we have already discussed uh, some basic introductory concepts related to uh, fluid mechanics and uh, hydraulic machines so please watch those videos first and th then uh, come to these uh, you know the next series of videos so here we'll be focusing our discussion on the classification of the study of fluids how we can study behavior of fluids by dividing it into two categories so the whole study of fluids it can be divided into two categories that is liquids and gases first hydrostatics second hydrodynamics so hydrostatics it is the branch of physics which deals with the study of the properties of fluids when they are at rest that is no movement whereas hydrodynamics it is the study of the property of fluids in motion so the next series of videos it will be on hydrostatics okay the characteristics the properties of fluids when they are at rest so we have already covered the different types of fluids here we are focused on these first two types ideal fluid and real fluid so the ideal fluid is one which is incompressible and has no viscosity whereas real fluid is one which possesses viscosity and has shear stress acting on it so all these things stress uh, viscosity we have already covered in the previous videos so i'm not going into detail about that so viscosity is basically resistance offered by the fluids layers of fluids for relative movement with respect to it so ideal fluid has no viscosity and is incom incompressible and uh, the shear stress acting on the fluid is zero whereas in real fluid it possesses viscosity and has finite shear stress acting on it so you will never find something like a ideal fluid almost all fluids are real fluids but for study of the behavior in various cases we might take the assumption of a fluid as ideal to simplify our discussion so here liquids at rest which is uh, the whole point of discussion of hydrostatics is that when liquid air is at rest okay stationary the forces or the force which is exerted by the liquid molecules it is always perpendicular to the surface in contact with the liquid so there are two cases first in which the liquid is in contact with the solid surface be it the base of the container or the vessel in which it is contained the force acting on that it is perpendicular in another case is the force acting on you know the fluid within it okay so that also that force is also perpendicular so this is for stationary fluids fluids at rest not in motion so how can we prove it let for a second we assume that this force acting on the base that is liquid in contact with a solid surface and here liquid in contact with a liquid surface so let's say these forces are not perpendicular but slightly oblique like this here this is the force acting on the solid surface in contact with the liquid and this is the force acting on by one of the liquid layers to the other liquid layer let's say it is not normal but acting at an angle with respect to the horizontal so that force causes a reaction force which is equal to the force exerted it can be resolved into two components f cos theta in the horizontal direction f sin theta in the 
uh, vertical direction the same here f cos theta in the horizontal f sin theta in the vertical so here this horizontal component f cos theta means that there is movement in the fluid molecules because this horizontal component will exert force on the liquid molecules to move from left to right in the horizontal direction which contradicts our assumption that liquid are at rest we are considering a stationary liquid so it means that when liquids are at rest we have a stationary liquid force acting by the liquid layers on the solid surface or force acting you know resultant force acting or exerted by the liquid layers above to the liquid layers downward it's always perpendicular normal okay never at an angle because if it would have been at an angle with respect to the horizontal the horizontal component of that force would cause movement of the fluid molecules in the horizontal direction which is against or which contradicts our assumption so this is the general behavior of the fluids at rest so the fluids at rest they always exert force perpendicular to the solid surface they are in contact or uh, the fluid or liquid layer above they always exert a perpendicular force on the liquid layers or fluid layers below it so here two important uh, things come into play first is the thrust of the liquid and then the pressure exerted by the liquid so the total perpendicular force exerted by this liquid uh, in contact with the solid surface or to the liquid layer below it that is called as the thrust and pressure is simply the thrust per unit area acting on the solid solid surface here or the liquid layer below it simply force by area that is the pressure exerted by the liquid surface si unit newton per meter square or pascal now some important thing uh, some important things to consider here is that in hydrostatics or when we are considering liquids at rest pressure at any given point is exerted equally in all directions and this point this feature is very important in dealing with fluids because they do not have a fixed shape and volume in case of gases and this convenient to use pressure and density to study the behavior of fluids as compared to force and mass when we are dealing with whether uh, fluids at rest hydrostatics or in motion hydrodynamics so why fluids exert pressure okay we we have discussed that uh, a liquid at rest it uh, exerts a perpendicular force to the solid surface in contact or the liquid layer below it but why does it do that behave in such a way now in a liquid there are molecules which are always in a state of random motion and in this state of random motion they undergo collisions with each other and as a result of this collisions they exert force perpendicular force on the liquid layer below it and when they collide with the walls of the container or the bottom of the vessel or the container in which they are you know kept they exert perpendicular force on it as well so because of this molecular collisions because of the uh, movement molecular movement of the liquid molecules they exert perpendicular force okay in two cases first in contact with the solid surface and then on the liquid layers below it 
okay now what is the uh, pressure exerted by a liquid column okay so here let us consider a cylinder of cross sectional area a filled with a liquid of density rho and it is filled up to let's say a height of h in the cylinder or the container now we know pressure is simply force by area force acting per unit area force is mass into acceleration of gravity here mass m is the mass of the liquid contained in the vessel or the cylinder so mass is simply volume into density cross sectional area of the cylinder is a height is h so simply volume is a into h volume into density is a h rho that is mass mass m is equal to a h rho so here pressure is equal to mass into acceleration into gravity which is a h rho into g by a a a gets cancelled in both the numerator and denominator and we get rho g h this is the pressure exerted by a liquid of density rho filled up to a height h in a cylinder this formula will come in very handy in various other uh, pressure measurement calculations using various instruments particularly for measuring the pressure exerted by various fluids so always uh, you know remember this concept another important thing which is pascal's law which is which state which states that uh, an increase in pressure at any point in a liquid which is enclosed and at rest it is transmitted uniformly and equally to every part of the liquid so what it essentially means is that if we have to understand it so here let's say we have this container where there are two points of measurement one at a which is on the surface of the liquid and another at b which lies at a depth or uh, you know h below a now here the pressure difference between a and b is simply rho g h p a minus p b that is the pressure difference between points a and b as per this concept pressure exerted by a liquid call so here let's say at this point a we increase the pressure by let's say a factor delta p so what it says that here at point b also the pressure will be increased by the same margin only then this pressure difference pa minus pb will be maintained why because h is constant g is constant and density of the liquid is also constant so only when both sides at a and b pressure is increased by the same margin only then this pressure difference will be maintained if let's say here at a it is increased by delta p and at b it does not increase by any margin then this pressure difference will not be equal to rho g h and that will contradict this concept of pressure exerted by a liquid column which is this rho g h and that means everything that we have studied related to it it will be wrong so 
basically the whole point of pascal's law is that when there is any increase of pressure at any point in a liquid which is enclosed in a container contained in a vessel that same increase of pressure is transmitted to every other point in the fluid so here not just at b it happens at here this point this point this point everywhere there is same increase of pressure okay at every other point pressure is transmitted uniformly okay pressure is increased by the same margin okay so this is the whole point of pascal's law so this is we have discussed about some basic concepts related to hydrostatics or uh, fluids or liquids at rest the force exerted by them the pressure exerted by a liquid column pascal's law and uh, why fluids they exert pressure okay so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to engineering science and technology have a great day thank you very much